start our own squad. Fuck, shut up. No, no, I'm serious. Our own squad. Wait, is that the plot? I think it is. Today we're starting a new cheerleading club on campus and why cheerleading you say? Because cheerleading is fun and it fosters school spirit. If we're good, we can go to nationals. Now, if we go to nationals, we could win. If we win, we get a check for $20,000. Now, what the hell do you want? A competition in front of the whole student body. Winner goes to nationals. The winner, representing Cal State College at the National Cheerleading Championships, the Renegade! Yeah! I bloody knew it! You did not! Did so! I'm not exactly... On behalf of the administration and alumni, I want to offer you and your team the full backing of the college. You're our new varsity cheerleading squad. Uh, does this mean they have to crush themselves now? Because that might be interesting. It might, but no, that was just phase one. Now it's time for phase two. Off to nationals to represent... Hit me with your best shot! Resolution isn't a fucking resolution at all! Nothing is fucking resolved! <sighs> Maybe the next one is the continuation of the story. Good point, Lockie. Maybe there is another chapter for the Renegade Stinger Varsity Team. The third movie is its own separate string of ass matter and there is still no fucking resolution to anything that happens in Bring It On Again. I have nothing to add. Two down, three to go. What are your thoughts, Lockie? Maybe the next one is better? I mean, I wasn't even really all that interested in the Renegade Stinger's half-finished storyline. Maybe this time we'll get some characters we can actually care about. You sound surprisingly optimistic. I wonder how long that'll last. Let's bring it on! All or nothing. I'm already angry. Oh, what is this? Suddenly the franchise has gone into phony-ass sitcom sets? Don't call this a franchise. Hey, you're still on defense, pal. Now it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. For homecoming king, the winner by a landslide, our star quarterback and All-American candidate, Brad Warner! Is the musical score telling us this kid just realized his lifelong dreams? Did we accidentally skip to the end of the movie? Homecoming Queen, Valedictorian, Senior Class It definitely sounds like the movie is over. Brittany, do you have anything you'd like to say? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. I don't think that's how you answer a do you have question. Oh, do you have a problem with her lax grasp of the English language? Yes, I would. Go pirate! So, doing a cheer at homecoming, huh? Okay. Roll call! Oh, fuck, not this again. Uh, it's an easy way to introduce the main characters. Yeah, except most of them won't be main anyway, and a true roll call would list everyone in the lineup, and since they didn't do that in the first two movies, what do you want to bet they're not going to do it now? I'm not a gambler. I'm Winnie. Brianna. Sierra. Amber. Yeesh, how'd that one get on the squad? And everyone knows that I'm Brittany. Oh, you're Brittany, are you? This movie's giving us jokes to run into the ground right off the bat. Hey, plus one for defense. Thanks, Brittany. Brittany thinks that she's so hot. 
Where I'd lost 10 pounds and dyed my hair. And apparently they've been teleported to the bowels of hell. We really made a big mistake. Don't you think her blues look fake? I swear that this is my real chest. My right is bigger than my left. <laughs> okay. We cut it close last time, guys. Let's maybe just, I don't know, not discuss the breasts of a high school girl. She might be 18. Oh, discretion, Locky, you little scamp. Red, red, red. Quit talking about high school breasts! Can a high schooler in America even get breast implants? Oh, well, I guess if they're 18. But are a woman's breasts even fully developed at 18? Ah, shut up! Anyway, this nonsensical cheer routine finishes with Brittany atop a pyramid blowing her little high school ass. Don't talk about that either. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> uh, classy move, bring it on three. In his defense, uh, never mind. No whip, no phone. Thanks, guys. Hey, babe. Hey. Can I have some? Sure. No, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't mean the coffee. Stop it, you're embarrassing what? me. Why? Uh, I shouldn't do this. And yourself, with that horrible excuse for smoothness. Should I? Oh, Brad is so hot. Again, he's Brittany's boyfriend. Get over it, Winnie. I am so not over it, Amber. Um, if by hot she means a remarkably average oaf punching way above his weight, then yeah, I see where she's coming from. Ow. Brad, stop it. People are staring. I'm head cheerleader. I can't be seen kissing a bland person. Hi, she has standards. Plus one for defense. What? Sweetie, 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 sweet. You sound like, you sound like such a virgin. I am a virgin. Mm. I'm a quarterback, babe. People expect me to score. Well, I want my first time to be special. I am special. I'll bet you are. If you can show me your commitment by the homecoming dance, and maybe... Yes! No, no, what? Two months? That two months is too long. That's two months too long. No, come on, don't make me wait that long, Brit. Brad, you've been waiting for me since ninth grade. Two months won't kill you. If he's been waiting for you for presumably over three years, why are you making him wait two more months? How arbitrary can you be? Just say, hey, Brad, you're a homely buffoon. We're not having sex, and be done with it. Is that how the gills got rid of you in high school? Yes, and you know what? Nobody got strung along and nobody developed any resentment. Okay. All right, fine. But homecoming, it's on. Oh, it is so on. Wait, wait. What did that mean? I think they just officially challenged each other to six. High school is so much weirder than I remember. Good job, guys. Let's do that one more time. Oh, come on, Britt. I could do that routine in my sleep. Sometimes I walk in my sleep. I wonder if I can cheer in my sleep. Oh, wow, it worked. No writer of this movie. It didn't. <laughs> if ever there was an argument for bulimia, it's Brianna's ass. Give her a break. Pacific Vista has never had a fat cheerleader. Wait, what are they talking about now? Brianna's white. Who's Brianna, the blonde chick? I will slap you, the one in the grain. Brit, if you don't say something to her, I will. Hey, what's up? You're white, Brianna. No, it's not. I would just a couple pounds more than last year. And that was pushing it. I didn't realize. Realize what? She looks exactly like the rest of them. Well, look, just lay off the snacks and... 
With the extra workouts, the weight should come right off. What extra weight? There is no extra weight! This is gonna bother you the entire movie, isn't it? If they keep it up, it will. One for defense. What if it doesn't? Put it this way. Pacific Vest has never had a fat cheerleader. Wow, Brett. Why didn't you just rip out her belly ring? That would have been less painful. Don't worry. That's exactly how I would have handled it. And if you were Captain and not a black-hearted envy goblin, that would mean something. Also, if she was actually fucking fat! There it was, another number one hit from Rihanna. Now attention all high school cheerleaders, Rihanna is hosting an audition for her TV special. So, if you think you have what it takes, pay attention. You can download the contest rules right now on SingularSource.com. Thank you, Radio Man, for that expertly crammed in exposition dump. Guess what? We're gonna be on television! What? Yes! Oh, hi, Daddy! Oh, hey, Princess! <laughs> what is that voice? Was he making fun of her? How was school? The squad loves my new routine, and plus, we're auditioning for a TV show. Oh, Brittany, honey, that sounds fantastic. Did you hear that, Tim? Yes, Tim. It sounds like he's choking on Reginald Bushroot. Brittany, your father lost his job, and we're gonna have to take a pay cut. The, uh, the company is relocating to Crenshaw Heights. We are moving to Crenshaw Heights. Are you insane? I just made captain! Honey, it's still early in the year. You'll just transfer to another school. Honey, you're smart, you're pretty, you're blonde. You'll make plenty of friends, it'll be fine. Well, at least something's about high school don't change. I'm sorry, I know this is supposed to be earth-shattering for poor Miss Hot Girl, but that voice is just too ridiculous to pay attention to anything else. Please make it go away. If you leave, who's gonna help me remember my locker combination? Oh, Sierra, it's your birthday. My birthday is April. Sweetie, your combination is the digits of your birthday. Oh! What are digits? Crenshaw Heights is only an hour away. We can still be friends. Yeah, but we can't enter the audition without a captain. Actually, we have a captain. Me. Get over yourself, Winnie. No. She's right. Spirit Law states that if the head cheerleader has to step down, the next cheerleader with the highest amount of votes is captain. Thank you. And a couple of things here I just want to make sure I understand. Yep. Their captain is leaving. Correct. The captain for which they voted. Correct. And they're not going to have a vote for a new captain. Correct. Nonsense, but I'm keen so far. Correct. And the reason behind not having another election was... <clears throat> spirit law. <sighs> Correct. What are they, fucking Native Americans? You know what they meant. I also know what she fucking said, and what is this? The next year later with the highest amount of votes is Captain. Thank you. She is pained by this. She looks on in wincing terror. There ought to be a thundercrack right there. Babe, you're not gonna be a cheerleader anymore? But I can't. I have put my heart and soul into the squad. Cheering with anyone else would just make me a cheer whore. You have to swear. Swear to us that you're never going to cheer again. Um, why? Britt, you don't have to do this. Thank you for a voice of reason, movie. Defense! I swear. Bloody hell. Of course. They even hold a funeral for her pom-poms, which is, as it sounds, kind of weird. Now you're not a cheerleader. I can't do this. That must really suck. <laughs> Put them back. No! Leave her alone! She's screwing up everything! No! Stupid! Ah! 
So, Brittany arrives at her new school and... Uh, it's gonna be one of those movies. What movies? Hey, looks like we finally about to get some snow on campus. Oh. Yeah. <gasps> hey! Yo, Pop-Tart, you got any black in you? No. You want some? You want some? <gasps> <laughs> oh, no, you did. Come on, man. OMG, look what you did. Well, it's not like it's real. For so real? What? And how would you know? Because this one is real. Oh, that's did nice. Did touch that? <laughs> my mama bought me this purse. Oh, I For love sure. mama. Yeah. Well, yeah. your mother must shop at the swap meets because that knockoff sucks. What is she doing? She's being a foamy cunt to the first person she meets. No wonder she was terrified to go back to school. She's got the social skills of a belligerent thistle. Hell no, Camille, come on. We're gonna be late to class. Yeah, she's right, girl. We better go. I ain't trying to get attention. Count your blessings, white girl. Ah, the classic, obviously mixed race person condescendingly calling someone white girl angle. That's not instantaneously tedious. Is there really not a single Caucasian in the student body? Lucky, this is an urban school written by an idiot. There are no middle-class white students, just as there are no ethnics at the wealthy school. That's a yes, then? Yes, this was written by an idiot. After yelling at the security guards, great idea, by the way, Brittany is late to her first class, and sure, it's easy to get lost in a new school on your first day. That's understandable. What is not understandable is this. Well, Miss Allen, have a seat and copy the board. You want me to copy all of that? What? Can't you just give it to me in like a book? I'm sorry, is it your mission to have an immediate conflict with every single person you meet today? She hasn't even taken a seat in her first class yet, and she's already questioning the first instruction from her first instructor! At lunchtime, the three girls that had a run-in with Brittany get up on some tables to do a cheer. Hey, yo, check this out. We got some new shit for y'all. And why save it for an event more important than lunch? Here we go now! Shabuya! Shabuya! Roll call! Oh, not another one. My name is Letty. Yeah! I like to party. Yeah! When I shake it. Yeah! The boys say, I'm mommy. First of all, ew! Secondly, since when is killing the rhythm part of a successful cheer? Well, if you want to nitpick, how is a roll call cheer something new in the first place? Good point. No, I was... Actually, I guess you're right. Of course it is. Well, those weren't even audible words. Clearly, a cheerleader worth applause. Enjoy the show, white girl. She's gonna do the white girl thing the whole movie, isn't she? She certainly is. Wanna start a counter? Yeah, might as well. I didn't know you were a cheerleader. <laughs> I'm the cheerleader, I'm Kat. And so are my two pals! Okay, she's insulted at two underlings and she's been a standoffish control freak for 100% of her screen time. She's the villain, right? A white girl moved from Upper Classington into Ghetto Dropolis and has been a pushy, invasive, vaginal wall pustule to everyone she's met. I think she's the villain. So, I was captain at my old school, and now you go to my school. So I guess that makes you... nothing. <laughs> <laughs> or they're both reprehensible cockbites, and our best hope is they died together in a watery grave. Hey, they give us hope. One for defense. Oh shit, my bad. I'll take painfully forced dialogue with unnatural delivery for a million? How did that even happen? 
Terrible physics aside, Brittany has now met her love interest, Jesse. And since she has a love interest, I guess she's the protagonist? No way. No. Mate, look at Fatal Attraction. That Sheila had a love interest and she wasn't the protagonist. I guess that's true. Basic Instinct, Casino, Batman and Robin, all women with intentions of romantic conquest, all villainous lunatics. Point taken, Lockie. I'm glad we took this little trip. Damn, you must be really into me to be following me around all day. I didn't know you were a cheerleader. It's not usually the first thing I tell a girl. Why not? Because the cute ones don't really go for queer leaders. This movie just cannot stop insulting itself and its audience, can it? Yes, writer of this movie about high school, it's so true that high school girls spend all their time avoiding high school boys with athletic bodies and gymnastic ability. They just hate that stuff. Mate, don't talk about high school boys' athletic bodies. You were talking about high school girls' breasts. Hey, fellas. <gasps> Officer Yikes of the Awkward Patrol. Yeah, this uh, thing that you're doing, uh, whatever it is. Uh, I don't know, uh, I don't really know what it is, but it's pretty weird now for basically everybody on the planet. So if you could just, uh, you know, move it along, we'd be uh, really appreciative. Sorry about that. Uh, sure thing, officer. You've been watching me. You've got a nice ass, too. Don't waste your time, Jesse. She can't hang. Camille, you don't even know her. Oh, I know her. Miss Fancy Fingernail Shimmy Shimmy Lip Gloss Barbie. Oh, come off it. Nobody talks like that. It's not even a complete thought. Anyway, antagonist number two antagonizes antagonist number one, and they go their separate ways. Brittany does end up going to tryouts, though, making her swearing off cheerleading thing completely pointless. And then, shock of all shocks, we get a bunch of her and Camille being bitches. One and two and three and four, five, six. You can't keep up, white girl. One and two and three and four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. That's the best you got? Yeah, I got it. What do you know? They're still both ugly fuckers. Hey, Barbie. It's Brittany. Whoever. You get to call yourself a cheerleader again. I DTS. No thanks. You know there are a hundred girls who would kill for this spot? Good. Then you don't need me. I love it when huge chunks of the film don't fucking matter. Yeah, I can see how that was appropriate. Girl, we need her. We gotta feel that spot, Camille. I said no. So does she. Reality check, Camille. She's the only one with enough cheer experience. Powderpuff is as good as any of us. Word. Y'all, she's rude. That girl that none of you have the decency to address by name is rude to you? Imagine that. After another pointless confrontation about the squad, Brittany runs home and meets her mother. Hey, how'd it go? Did you join the squad? Ah, what was that? Did you join the squad? She sounds like Marge Simpson became a Stepford wife. They hate me. Oh, they don't hate you. And I promised my friends that I would never cheer again. Well, what kind of friends would ask you to quit something that you love? Terrible friends! And guess what? Her friends consist of a moron they all patronize, a spineless chick nobody listens to, a fear monger that nobody likes yet orders everyone around, and this poor girl that even your daughter bullied for being fat, which she isn't. They are horrible friends, and your daughter is one of them. <sighs> Finally, the writer couldn't delay anymore, and Brittany shows up to join the squad. Hey. 
Foster Flake in the house. Thanks for the heads up, Coco Puff. Everybody, this is Brittany. <laughs> what? Oh, nothing. I'm just surprised you know my name. I was expecting you to introduce me as White Girl. Oh, well, my bad. Everybody, this white girl's name is Brittany. You happy? Ecstatic. Good. Are they friends now? I have no bloody idea. We get treated to a practice cheer with Brittany spicing things up at the finish. Hey, what? Brittany cheers. What was that? Spirit fingers. Everybody does spirit fingers. I've got a spirit finger for you. Oh, so you're the only one who can contribute ideas. That's right. This is not a chairocracy. And there's room for one captain only. You understand that? Whatever. First off, uh, can we cut this cheer word garbage? These stereotypes use ghetto speak, not cutesy valley girl bullshit. Secondly, one idiot shouting spirit fingers does not count as contributing ideas. Furthermore, spirit fingers are not a vie for leadership. You are never, ever to feel threatened by spirit fingers. All right, we need to work on these stunts for this audition. What audition? The Ray on a TV special. We need them computers. Yeah, I remember that radio host talking about a TV spot for a cheerleading squad? Of course you don't, but now it's part of the movie again. We also see Brittany's friends practicing for the same audition. But why? Their families are loaded. Their school is loaded. Why would they be competing against shitty schools like Crenshaw Heights? Who cares? Let's watch the evil cheer captain turn into a stripper in the middle of the routine for absolutely no reason. S-L-U-T! What does that spell? Winnie! <laughs> no, it doesn't. You know as captain, I could kick your ass off this squad. And as a black belt, I could just kick your ass. <sighs> of course she is. How many stereotypes are in this movie? Brittany shows up at practice, but the guys aren't participating. Instead, they're in an obnoxious huddle dicking around. Stop it, guys! Violence never solves anything! Chill. We're crumping. What? Look and learn, pixie stick. Yeah, dicking around. It's like street theater. Improv the anger in you. I don't have any anger in <laughs> You're a rich white girl stuck here in Crenshaw Heights. Please, you should be the angriest person in here. Stop it! Get mad, get mad! So, to teach her how to flail like a douchebag, they have to get her angry. <sighs> yes. But why would you want to do something if you have to ruin your mood to do it? I... I don't know. If we added some of this crumping, it could really get us noticed by Rihanna. Uh-uh. Nope. If we change Camille's choreography, she'll be pissed. But they do! And guess what? Princess Power Trip throws a shit fit! Whose idea was this? Camille, don't blame them. It was my idea to change the routine. Why? Because half of the moves in your routine are illegal. Judges take off points for vulgarity. I know the rules. Well then, what the fuck? You're auditioning for a chance to win stuff for your school, and you're queen bitching over the routine, but you just admitted that half the stuff you're making them do will worsen your chance for success. How did you get to be captain? Or in high school? Then why do you keep breaking them? Because the things we do get us noticed. Even when we don't win, they say we're the best. No. No, you're not seen as the best. The winners are seen as the best. That's what winning is. If you can't follow the rules, you're not seen as the best. You're seen as either poor listeners or cheaters. 
If you can't function within the parameters of a competition, then you're not the best at anything. I could be the best three-point shot in tennis, but there is no three-point shot in tennis. Thus, I would not be the best at tennis. Is this getting through? Because it's kind of important. How can you like this crap? I don't! Whatever, all this does is lead to another boring argument and Camille orders them back to the intentionally illegal routine. Later, the cunt shift from Britney's former squad sees her on television during a news story about the Crenshaw Heights squad training for the Rihanna show. Hooray for convenience! We then cut to a football game that sounds packed even though the entire away bleachers are completely fucking empty. <laughs> Britney's friends have arrived, though, because this movie needed more uncomfortable confrontations. What are you guys doing here? We came to see you. Liar. I wanted to tell you guys, I just... But you didn't. Why not, Britney? We tell each other everything. You say you'd never cheer again. I know, Sierra, but it was so hard. Especially for a cheer whore. Hold up, who are you calling a hoe? I've got a rape whistle and mace. Give me that. Back up, ma rat. Look, calm down there, my friends. <laughs> Shit. I don't even like you, and I treat you like a better friend. Ah, you're all kind of terrible. Good. Because she's gonna need one. Let's go, Winnie. What the hell is that girl mad about? She's supposed to be the considerate one. What is your problem? Let's see. Now that you're gone, and your reputation is trashed, I don't believe I have a problem. How did she even get on the squad? I don't care if you're a good tumbler. If you have the likability of a blue waffle, you're not going to be invited to join in group activities. Blue waffle? Look it up. No, don't look it up. You miss cheering for them, don't you? No. Baby. Well, you better figure it out. Because you need to decide who you're cheering for. Okay, first of all, how could anyone miss working with those shallow jerks? But even if she does, so what? Secondly, what does that even mean, decide who she's cheering for? It's not like she can just decide to go back and cheer for her old school. She doesn't go to school there anymore. I would just love it if the conversations in this movie would start making fucking sense. You're watching Cheer TV. Rihanna, cheer on. TV special is Pacific Vista. Nope. Cheer TV does not exist. How else would squads get news about each other? Nope. Cheerleading isn't news. But they did. Nope. Well, seeing the news about Pacific Vista's progress, Camille nuts up and makes a humbling decision. Look, we're going to use these steps y'all came up with as a team. Wait a second. I've been telling you since day one, ad crumping, and you've Look, just blown me off. Are y'all done? I'm not done. Yes, yeah, she is. <sighs> While I'm glad the pointless love interest had the brain power to silence the idiot, I'd like to point out that she is such an antagonistic dumbass, she tried to pick a fight over the fact that she just got what she wanted. She could have been all smug and gloaty about it, but no, she wanted to pick a fight about it. Well, in her defense, nothing. Oddly enough, there's a montage of both teams training, almost like they had to kill some time. And then Jesse takes Brittany to a rooftop because love interests are supposed to do shit like that. You know, Camille's right about me. Squad's the only place I'll ever fit in. But she needs to know she can't mess with me. <laughs> Camille can take care of herself. She used to be a gangbanger. What? She could kill me! I'm playing with you, Brittany. That is so not funny. I saw Boys in the Hood. And I saw Clueless. But I still came up here with you. Yeah. Guess that shows how little we know about each other. Or at any rate, how little the writers know about teenagers. Or romance. Or racial sensitivity. Or American subculture. Or American culture. Or movies. Or how to write. Anyway, Jesse kisses her and she runs away without telling him it's because she has a boyfriend. A boyfriend she doesn't actually like. She then calls her friend Amber to alleviate her guilt. I kissed another boy tonight. Who? Where? His name's Jesse on the mouth. No! Yes! What if Brad finds out? Brad's been studying with Winnie. So? He's our star athlete, Britt. When did he ever study? Just... 
Mean to every group of people in the world, aren't you, Movie? We both know the only reason she wants Brad is because he's yours. So what are you gonna do about it? I don't know. How about let the terrible woman have your shitty boyfriend because you don't care about either of them? You've already lost your team. Do you want to lose Brad too? He couldn't hurt. Hey well, guys, I, I have some bad news. What's up? I can't cheer at the game on Friday. Why not? Because... This better be good. Well, I forgot that I made some pretty set in stone plans with other people on this date. And since I made it with them first, I have to make good on my word. I know it's really inconvenient, but I promise I will find a way to make it up to you. My dog died. Yes, she lies again because no reason. And then while she and Brad are preparing to head in for Pacific Vista's homecoming dance, Camille and Jesse show up with a bouquet of flowers for the memorial service and catch Brittany in the act of being well-dressed. Yes, their concern for Brittany's emotional recuperation was so great they brought flowers for her dog's funeral. That is how this subplot is blown open. Dog flowers. What are you guys doing here? She told me about your dog, so I came along to offer my condolences. But I see you've already been condoled. Look, I never had a dog. I just... I just needed an excuse to get out of the game tonight. You had one! You're dressed for it right now! Why? Because I promised I'd go to homecoming with Brad. And Brad is. Her boyfriend. Yeah, see, it's funny because she never mentioned a boyfriend. She never mentioned a lot of things. Like the fact that she's a liar. Uh, Brittany, what's going on? Like, it's just a misunderstanding. No, you lied to their faces. It wasn't all lies. Some of it was just keeping important secrets. So, one for defense? Get off the squad. For missing one game? No. For finally deciding who you're cheering for. So, in this universe of screen-filtered sanity, the only way to get booted from a cheerleading squad is to fulfill a prior obligation at another school. Correct? Kinda looks that way. Good. Just want to make sure that the megalomaniacs are safe from being cut. Brittany still goes with Brad to Vista's homecoming, where he hands her a cute little box that she assumes holds something romantic, but the character is nothing more than a cardboard cutout of a throbbing erection, so the unfunny surprise is that it's a hotel room key. Remember earlier my comment about looking like a sitcom? I think we've hit rock bottom of sitcom writing now as well. Speaking of bad writing, the movie gets even more confused about its tonal direction when things go sour for the last time between Brittany and her Vista friends. Then you're done. And why is that? Because after you make friends with those people, you start shopping with them. Then you're dating one, and the next thing you know, you're gonna be on some bad talk show screaming at your baby daddy. See, the movie wants you to be all appalled that she said something racially charged, except they've been doing it the entire time and playing it for laughs. I mean, it's not funny, but it's equally ineffective as shock value because it's a movie about fucking cheerleading of all fucking fuck and is not a fucking forum for racial fucking discourse! Anyway, instead of actually fighting or whatever, they decide to do their stupid roll call cheer. It's like a callback to the beginning, only about ten times dumber. Hey, Amber. Hey, what? Introduce yourself! No way! Introduce yourself! Okay. One, two, three, four, five. My name is Amber and I say hi. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back it up and meet my friend. Hey, Winnie. Oh, wow. Well, I think we're all fairly humiliated. Hey, Brittany. Hey, what? Introduce, Introduce yourself. No way. Introduce yourself. Okay. Shabuya. Sha, sha, shabuya. Uh, Roll call. My name is Brittany. What? Yeah. I'm uh, so strong. Okay. Shake it, yeah. You better bring it on. Shabuya, sha, sha, shabuya, break it down now. Wait a minute. You're telling me that the phrase bring it on doesn't actually appear in the Bring It On franchise until the third movie? And when it does, it appears to be part of a strip tease? 
Yes. Because when they finally say the name of the franchise, they are... Crumping. Which has nothing to do with cheerleading, and more closely resembles backup dancing for Janet Jackson. Anyway, after the pointless cheer thing, Brad is announced as homecoming king because I guess everyone in this school loves a self-obsessed sex hound. Well, no surprise here, Pacific Vista. Your homecoming king is Brad Warner. And I love the return of the inappropriate glorious success music. Great, now he's really gonna want to celebrate. I'm sure it won't be with you. He only brought you here because he feels sorry for you. And we didn't want to dump you over the phone. No, he brought her here because he wants to fuck her. But I'm not really sure why, because he's fucking you, so aren't his needs being met? Well, yeah, but he's been trying to fuck Brittany since ninth grade. What I'm saying is he's been chasing it for so long, he simply determined to make it happen. At this point, it's just a matter of principle. Oh, I get it. High school dominance fucking. Nothing awkward about that. Really? Well, if you wanted to break up with me, Winnie, then why'd he get us a room? So he could get what he wanted and then break up with you? And this year's queen is Winnie Harper. Congratulations. I had sex with Brad Warner. First of all, I fucking love this guy's reaction. Gets me every time. But more on point, why did you say that to the people at the dance? How do you like that, Brittany? I finally beat you at something. Okay, you're an obsessive little psychopath. But why did you say this in front of a crowd? <sighs> so everyone knows because she sees it as a victory. She wants everyone to know that she considers herself a loser that's always falling short of the successes of her nemesis, and her claim to fame is fucking a guy that her nemesis didn't find attractive in the first place. Yes? Okay. Brad, I can't tell you how much of a relief it is not to be your girlfriend anymore, because, well, you're a pig. And Winnie. You're just too much of a backstabber to have any real friends. But there is one thing you're right about. I don't have what it takes to be a pirate anymore. You guys enjoy the rest of your night. And the party just goes back to normal as if the most awkward moment in Pacific Vista's homecoming history didn't just take place. Honestly, why hasn't someone called Officer Yikes on this movie's climax? Okay, fellas, here it is. This movie was charged with numerous counts of awkward themes and deliveries upon its release, okay? No person or product can be charged more than once for the same offense as offenses can never be unmade. You got it? Good. Secondly, please do not invoke the name of the Aqua Patrol or its members without a situation at hand. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Aqua Patrol is not a toy. That guy is intense. Yeah, I saw that. Anyway, Brittany shows up at the audition in hopes of being allowed back on the Crenshaw squad. I, I never should have ditched you guys for some stupid dance. Because keeping your word for prior obligations is... Fuck it, never mind. I thought I needed to be the leader. But it turns out I just need to be a part of the squad. Hey, look! Character development! That's the best defense of this movie yet! That does not count as character development! This movie is nothing but a bunch of ass cocks with insecurity issues trying to manipulate each other in some moronic power struggle. Yes, she cut her losses from the place where she had power, and now she's worming her way up the social tier of this other school without being captain, but not being captain does not count as development! She's likely just biding her time until the current captain shows some kind of weakness, and then BAM! Shot in the back and she seizes power! 
Just like Starscream. Get out! Whatever, the Vista crew shows up and pisses them off. Yay for trite convenience. So you better bring it all, white girl. Oh, white girl? Remember when you used to be one? What the hell kind of insult is that? The kind written by a racially and culturally brain-dead money grubber, Lucky. But what you guys have that they don't is your spirit, so you really gotta go for it if you wanna win. Yes, you're feuding with only one of their entire squad, so naturally, none of them have any spirit. Not a single member of this squad, a thing that exists only for the sole purpose of raising spirits, has any spirit. Fuck, we've only heard five of their people even speak, so let's just lump them all together. Well, we've only heard five members of the Crenshaw squad speak, and they haven't actually said anything in support of their school. Is that a defense? Well, no. I'm just saying, a blanket statement is unjustified in both directions. You know, ignorant generalizing dialogue aside, this is something that's really starting to piss me off. Why are they trying to make movies about opposing cheer squads if they don't have the time? Two-thirds of these squads in all three of these movies have been mindless, voiceless extras whose parts have no bearing whatsoever on the outcome of the film. How am I supposed to get behind a team, let alone two teams per movie, when most of the team has nothing to do with the movie that is allegedly about them? Each school gets to perform their routine for the judges, then the two best squads will come back and perform for me, and I'll pick the winner. Well, why not just pick a winner now? That squad get to join me in a TV performance that will be shown worldwide. Okay. For what? But, more important, more important than that, you will win brand new computers for your school. Now to the year. No, I'd say national television exposure is probably a bit more important than computers, especially for the rich schools that can already afford computers. Look, mate, the movie's not going to acknowledge that a wealthy school should not be competing for stuff they don't need, okay? Let it go. We've got a competition to make fun of. We kick things off with Crenshaw Heights doing a cheer a bit. Well, uh, actually, they're not cheering at all. Oh, we are doing that again? A cheerleading competition without cheers? Brilliant! I love watching a franchise make an ass of itself three times in a row. Yeah, it's really just an overly long dance routine with a few tosses... tossed in. Horrible excuse for a cheerleading routine, but it makes a heck of a dance routine, which I guess is what Rihanna would actually want. Yeah, why is she looking at cheer squads and not dance troops? Fuck if I know. Anyway, Pacific Vest is up next and they do the same thing without the crumping spares action. Afterward, Brianna, you know, the fat one, she collapses due to fatigue. Is Brianna sick? She fainted. She's been starving herself to stay on the squad. Yeah, starving herself! Which is why the last time we saw her, she had a plate of food at homecoming. Oh, and Brittany and Jesse get back together because... Durr. Are you ready to hear the final? I'm ready to hang myself. The Pacific Vista Pirates! Really? For the Crenshaw Heights Warriors! No way! Looks like we're gonna have a little rivalry coming up. Honey, this rivalry's been going on the entire movie, and it has yet to be interesting. We're only excited because it's almost over. The final challenge starts in 15 minutes. <laughs> So, Vista comes out and does another routine, this time adding in maneuvers that would be illegal if judges were present, but the only judge is Rihanna, so no rules apply. Which kind of reinforces the notion that Rihanna knows fuck all about cheerleading, so again, why is she doing this? Not only that, but now the Crenshaw crew is simply letting itself onto the competition stage before the opposition is finished, mirroring their routine in an effort to fuck with their heads. I guess I get the idea of no rules apply, but is Rihanna really going to want to work with such pushy little fuckers? They're actually dressed like music video dancers now, that's probably all it takes. The Crenshaw crew then literally muscles the Vista squad off of the stage so they can do their own routine which is mercifully shorter. I told you we should do more cheers like that. Again! <coughs> Shut up! Ooh. 
No, Winnie, you shut up. I don't have to shut up, I'm captain. Yeah, and ever since you became captain, you've been a bigger pain in our asses than before. Oh, like I care. There's nothing you can do about it. Actually, Spirit Law states that if there's ever a cheer mutiny, that the squad can vote to replace their captain effective immediately. What? If you vote to replace Winnie as captain, raise your hand. Rihanna, come on! What? What? You don't remember when Brittany left the Vesta crew and they said... Spirit Law states that if the head cheerleader has to step down, the next cheerleader with the highest amount of votes is captain. And you were all like, why don't they just vote for a new captain? Oh yeah, that was pretty stupid. Well now they're saying they can vote for a new captain if everybody wants to. Well of course they want to, everyone seems to hate Winnie. Exactly my point! Yeah, I wonder why they didn't demote her way back then instead of waiting until this moment. Anyway, Rihanna obviously chooses the backup dancers to be her backup dancers. In... Uh, a beehive? But they go to the trouble of showing us they have a blue screen, so you know they're not really in a beehive. Wait! If they're using a blue screen, how is her dress showing up on camera? That's how technology works, dumbass! Ah! And that's how we get away from Bring It On 3. Was it a good flick? Fuck no, it was fucking garbage made to steal money from idiots. And it was virtually the same as the first two movies. A protagonist with a cheer squad takes on an antagonist with a cheer squad. The speaking rules are all one-note cliches, and then there's a love story crammed in for no fucking reason. Why can we not get a little bit of creativity behind characters and motivation? And why the fuck was a low-budget cheerleading movie used to take on topics like class warfare and race relations? Hey, speaking of race relations, let's take a look at that white girl tally. White girl. 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 <laughs> Fascinating. Infuriating. And now let's take a look at all the uncomfortable terms used in place of healthy communication. Yo, pop tart. Barbie looking heifer. Quailators. Pixie stick. Vanilla latte. White trash. Hey, Barbie. Buster Blake in the house. Powder puff is as good as any of us. Hey, Buffy. Then get your little white ass over here. Looks like we finally about to get some snow on campus. They're so ghetto. Don't be getting mad at me because that Chica Blanca turned you down. Bite me, crouching tiger. Winnie, you're such a candy cane. And you're such a wigger. Miss Fancy Fingernail Shimmy Shimmy Lip Gloss Barbie. Incredible! Clearly, there are no redeeming qualities whatsoever in this film, and you should never, ever watch it. It is, however, an excellent study on how morons perceive American youth. Plus, it got Lockie as riled up as I usually am, so thank you, Bring It On 3. And that's another thing! It's not even Bring It On 3, it's Bring It On, all or nothing. Well, all or nothing of what? To what does that refer? What states in this film are of such dire consequence that they could possibly require that title? But then again, I guess I might as well be asking, if everyone in this movie is such a selfish idiot, how do any of them have friends? Why was Winnie obsessed with Brittany? Why did anyone find Brad attractive? Why did the judges just up and walk away from Rihanna's concert? And why the fuck was Rihanna in this thing anyway? Or maybe, how did something this immensely stupid even get made? Do you have anything you'd like to add? Yes, I would. Damn it, Ted.